Hey, Julie here with Hearing God's Voice Meditation. I just got done recording the meditation that you're about to listen to, and it is amazing. God has an amazing thing to show you at the end of this meditation. So today, we're going to spend a few extra minutes preparing our hearts and our minds to hear God, because the number one thing I'm hearing is that a lot of you are having trouble quieting your mind and your heart to hear, and you're also having a hard time identifying God's voice. And that is completely understandable. We all deal with that. So we're going to spend a few extra moments um, preparing ourselves before we actually get into the meat, if you will, of the meditation. Today, we're, we're focusing on John 14, 27. It's a timely word from God. And then God wants to take us even further in this meditation to show you something that you specifically need from him during this time. It is so cool. I'm so excited for you to experience it. I can't wait to see what you think. So let's get started. God, I thank you so much that you are opening our ears and you are opening our eyes and you are opening our hearts to receive from you today. We thank you, God, that we can come to you in faith knowing that you exist and that you reward us with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you, by any chance, closed your eyes, could you open them for just a few moments? Because we're going to start this meditation a little bit differently. I want you to tell me two or three things that you see in your physical environment right now. Two or three things. What do you see? Great. Awesome. Now, close your eyes. Just take a deep breath and tell me three things that you hear outside in your environment right now. Three things that you hear. It could even be a buzzing in your ear that you might hear. Something outside your window you might be hearing. Good. Now tell me... Do you smell anything right now in the outside environment? Do you smell anything? Good. Now, do you taste anything inside your mouth? Do you have any flavors that you're tasting? Now, do you feel anything in your environment? Like, Do you notice the temperature of your room that you're in right now? Do you feel anything on your skin? Do you have any air moving through that you feel on your skin? Now we're going to move inwardly. And I want you to imagine what does the sound of a fan in, inside your, your mind's ear, if you will, what does a fan sound like? What does a plane flying overhead, what does that sound like? And what does the sound of a balloon popping sound like? Good. Now tell me, what does a rose smell like inside your mind? What does fresh baked cookies smell like? And what does the air smell like after a beautiful spring rain? Good. Now, can you tell me what does a rose look like? Good. What does your favorite cookie look like? And what does your favorite person look like? Can you see them in your mind's eye? Even if it's not strong, it can be a faint image. That's fine. Good. Now, what does it feel like to have the wind blow through your hair? What does it feel like to zip up a coat? And what does it feel like to wash your hands? Now I want you to imagine what it feels like when someone you love tells you they love you. What does it feel like? 
What does it feel like when someone tells you that they're proud of something that you've done? Good. Now I want you to ask yourself right now, what are you feeling emotionally? Like for real, what are you feeling right now? No judgment at all, no judgment. What do you feel? Good. When it comes to listening to God's voice, God can speak to us any way that he chooses. But a lot of times he uses an inner eye, like you see something inside your mind's eye. He might say something to you through words, um, through a Bible scripture. You might sense something emotionally. Um, And so I want you to keep that in mind as we continue out through this meditation, listening for God's voice. I call it where you stop and you look and you listen. When you want to hear God's voice, you stop. And you look inside your mind's eye and see if he's showing you anything. And you listen for his voice. And you sense direction. And it's almost like an intuitive knowing. Like a spirit of discernment. Like you just feel something. Those are different ways that God can speak to us. And so as we begin this meditation with John 14, 27, I want you to be aware of how God's speaking to you. John 14, 27 says, Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. The Greek word for troubled means to shake, to trouble, to unsettle. To be troubled, you can cause anxiety or it even causes feelings of grief. And so when Jesus says in John 14, 27, let not your heart be troubled, it's almost like the picture of someone just feeling inwardly shaken or unsettled or just confused or even upset. And so I want us to turn this over to God and let God teach you What does it mean, let not your heart be troubled? And this is the question I have for you. God, can you show me places in my life where I am allowing myself to be inwardly shaken? Where am I allowing fear to grab a hold of me in my life? Then stop and look and listen. And don't assume anything. God's voice is spontaneous. It's almost as if you're thinking of nothing and then it just appears. You might see something. You might hear something. You might sense something. God might be showing you a circumstance in your life where this is showing up. There is absolutely no judgment. Your part is just to rest and listen. And then Jesus says, neither let your heart be afraid. And the Greek word for afraid here means just a gripping fear or just this dread that causes you to shrink back and want to hide you know it's like in the greek word it's like you're too afraid to look at your problem head on that's what jesus meant when he said don't let yourself be afraid so ask god where in my life Have I left a door open to the spirit of fear that's trying to control me right now? You know, what am I hiding from that I need to face head on? And then stop and look and listen and don't try to hear anything. You just rest and you just listen. see something 
might hear something, might just sense something. And you may only hear one word, and that's okay. Trust the process. This is a journey, and you're learning. Give yourself grace. Take a deep breath and listen. God, how do I apply this verse to my life? Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. God, we ask for forgiveness, Father, if we have let fear take a hold of something in our lives that you asked us to do something and we shrunk back in fear and we didn't do it god we ask for your forgiveness now this is something new for us here let's let god show you something really cool here you're on a journey you're on a journey to hear god's voice and you're on a journey in your life to do something that God is calling you to do. And maybe you don't exactly know exactly what that is right now, and that's okay. But I feel in my heart that God is going to call you to do something that is going to cause you to draw back in fear and in dread, and it's going to cause anxiety. But on this journey, I want you to see yourself right now on a park bench. You see the kids playing around you in the park and you hear their laughter and you feel the breeze through your hair. And next to you is Jesus. And you can just feel his love and you can feel his peace. It's almost like it just emanates from his body and it just surrounds you and it wraps you like a warm blanket. And he's telling you about this journey ahead. And he may not give you anything specific right now and that's okay. And in Jesus' hand is a backpack. He has a backpack for you. Can you see it? What color is it? Does it have anything written on it? Does it have any pictures on it? Good. Now take this backpack from Jesus. And I want you to open the backpack. And open it up and look inside. And there's one thing in there that's waiting for you. What is it? This is one thing that Jesus says this is going to help you on your journey ahead. And then let him tell you about it what it's for. Good. And now put it back in the backpack. Zip it up. Put it on your back. Stand up. And embrace Jesus Christ your Savior, and your Lord, and the one who speaks to you throughout this entire day and throughout your entire journey. Thank him that you can hear his voice. and Thank him that he gives you all the guidance you need. And then I want you to turn and start your journey down the road knowing that you have everything you need. 
for this journey ahead. Jesus, we thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us. God, help us to not let our hearts be troubled and help us to not be afraid, God. We thank you, Lord, that we can continue to meditate on this verse throughout this day, that you're going to continue to speak to us and you're going to continue to guide us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I love when God has some really cool stuff ahead for us, and I'm always curious to see what you experienced. Can you tell me in the comments below what was in your backpack? What did Jesus tell you you needed it for? I'd love to read them. I will respond to every single one of them. I always do. Uh, and if you can, would you please like and subscribe to this video? When you do, it tells YouTube to continue sharing this meditation with other people. And I promise you have thousands of brothers and sisters in Christ that need to learn not to let their heart be troubled and how to not let their, their heart be afraid. And by you liking and by you subscribing, you are continuing to teach them how to do this. You have a part to play in spreading the Great Commission and it's through liking and subscribing and commenting. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, I can't wait to see you again very soon. Shalom, shalom.